tells me. Alcohol free. Right. Given the devastation of the fact that we are not going to be drinking any alcohol for the next few days, we have some low calorie alternatives. It's time for some experimentation. But when it comes to calories, how low will we go? Apple, mint and green tea cooler, 24 calories a glass. Mmm, I actually quite like that. Do you? It's refreshing. Oh, you're telling big fat fibs that it's like... <laughs> <laughs> oh, it tastes like nettles. <laughs> <laughs> so, only Debs went for that one. Next, the cranberry refresher. Cranberry juice, water and a squeeze of lime for just 60 calories. I like cranberry. Oh, now that's nice. Pass it down to Bev. Oh, yeah. Is that a replacement for red wine, Bev? Oh. Actually, I like that. I do you like cranberry. Mm. Mm. At 50 cows, will we worship at the Shirley Temple? Made with ginger ale and a dash of blackcurrant cordial. Oh, Ooh, I like that. That is quite refreshing. Mm. It's lovely. It's so spicy. And the final non arco cocktail is tomato juice with all the trimmings. Well, this is me, Virgin. <laughs> Virgin Debbie? Yeah. 60 calories. I love that. Mm. Do you? Mmm. <laughs> That's nice. No, I could do that. Yeah. yeah. Would you That's have some Worcester nice. sauce in there? Yeah, yes, Worcester yeah. sauce. OK, girls, so we've only got a few more days to go. Are we going to be drinking any of these instead when we go to our parties? Oh, yeah. yeah. I'd, I'd, be I'd, I'd, I'd be quite happy with that. Job done. So the next time any of us want to hit the bottle, we still can, but by cutting the calories with our saintly substitutes. Cheers. Yeah, cheers. 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 I like this one. Over the past two weeks, I've been revealing exactly how the food industry helps us fatten up. So far, I've looked at the pitfalls of supermarkets' buy one, get one free deals. I only meant to go in for a sandwich, actually. Come out with about £25. And how diet foods aren't the easy, quick-fix diet solutions you might think. If you've taken all the fat out, you've got to leave something there that's going to make it taste good. That tends to be sugar. Plus, we've revealed how manufacturers promote key product ingredients which convince us to buy fattening foods. Fundamentally, these are high-fat, high-sugar, junk food products that we should be eating very little of. We're a nation in love with snacking, and it's usually junk. Paprika! Food manufacturers say they merely provide products people want to buy. But do we just eat our favourite foods because we have no self-control? Or do manufacturers set out to make their snacks irresistible? Listen to that. Nearly gone. The whole tube. There is no doubt about it. Pringles get me going. And before I know it, the whole tube's gone. So, in a bid to find out exactly what makes Pringles so moorish for me, I'm meeting up with neuropsychologist Dr David Lewis. Hello. Hello. Nice to see Hi, you. Hi, David. He and his team work with manufacturers to examine the conscious and unconscious responses we have to their products. His pioneering studies can analyse brain activity, and by wiring me up to an EEG machine, Dr Lewis can see how I react when I eat a range of different foods. I'd like you just to sit still for 30 seconds with your eyes closed. This is going to give us some initial baseline reading. Just imagine you're lying perhaps on some lovely tropical beach. And now Sophie will give you a bit of banana to swallow. And to savour. Thank you. With each bite I take, the research team can see what's really going on in my brain and examine the responses that we're completely unaware of. From healthy foods, to chocolate, and finally... Oh, is that a Pringle? It is. Mm. My favourite. By analysing my brain activity, David can see which foods triggered the greatest responses, the healthy snacks or the junk. Here we have the various products which you had. If we look at the healthy food, well, they didn't make you particularly relaxed. But look here, look at the Snickers bar and look at the Pringles, the crisps. Very, very high level of relaxation. No wonder once I pop, I just can't stop. The Pringles have topped the chart as my ultimate comfort food. Are we saying that healthy food can never compete with junk food? That's pretty much it, yes. 
Seriously? Yeah, very Moorish, as one says. So you have one, you have, then you have another, and maybe a little bit later on you have a third. And of course, this is what the manufacturers want you to do. They want you to buy and consume uh, as much of their product as possible. Junk food snacks aren't created by chefs, but by technicians in laboratories. Richard Marshall is a food scientist who specialises in analysing foods and the effects the ingredients have on our taste buds. So what's really in a Pringle? Well, these are the, the basic ingredients of a Pringle. Maltodextrin. Oh, but it's, it's sweet. Some emulsifier. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's like candle wax. Dried potato. Oh. We've got some vegetable oil. We've then got flour. And then finally, we've got salt. That's a Pringle. Mm. Well, it would be if you mixed it together. Each crisp is less than 50% potato. So what gives Pringles their pulling power? What are the buttons that are being pressed in terms of this kind of food that appeal to us? The saltiness. We need salt and we're programmed to need salt. But there's enough salt in there to really attract us, to really make it desirable food. We also have fat receptors as well. So when you put fat into your mouth, you stimulate those receptors and your body says, this is a desirable food. Procter & Gamble, who manufacture Pringles, deny that any ingredients are included or manipulated to encourage excessive snacking. But Richard believes that our attraction to these foods is part of our genetic makeup. I mean, it goes back in, in, into our sort of evolution because you know, we were hunter-gatherers, needed lots of energy all the time, and so all those things, the sugar, the fat, were things that we needed. And, and the manufacturers have, have realised that, and, and they're essentially sort of exploiting a physiological weakness. You know, we can't sort of um, resist these things because they, they've got it right. You know? And so we just eat them and eat them and eat them. So you want... Oh, you are a bad, bad man. Dieting doesn't have to be about what you can't have. It's about relishing what you can have. And rugby legend turned champ of the chopping board, Matt Dawson, is here to show us how. We all love a good roast on a Sunday, so Matt's going to give it to us flavour-filled and low-cal. It's what we all dream about at the weekend. A Sunday roast. Yes! yes! Come on! Yeah, Lizzie, you like your gravy, don't you? I love and it. it. And really it. thick and gloopy. And, oh. Yes, gravy as well. A normal portion of Sunday roast, 950 no. calories. No. Oh, how horror. I reckon I can do it for about 450. No. Go. No. Go, Is it going to taste as good, Dawson? What do you think? We've got a, a top rump of beef. OK. Uh, and then I've got some new potatoes and parsnips that I'm going to roast. Yeah. And loads of veg. I've got sweet potato, mm. butternut squash, some... Ooh. Yeah. Ooh, 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 ooh. Uh, and some broccoli. Mm -hmm. First things first, let's get the uh, the root vegetables in because they're going to take longer. Girls like parsnips? Yeah. Yeah, we like parsnips. Look at this little beauty. Olive oil in a spray. That's reducing your calories. Six of these, six sprays, about a teaspoon. Matt's roast is weigh in at only 83 calories a portion. Spraying on a little olive oil is much better than piling on the goose fat or lard, so these have half the cows of traditional roast spuds. These are going to go in 200 degrees, probably about 40, 45 minutes, yeah. just to keep your, keep your eye on it. And that's it, you just leave them. OK, now, the, uh, the, the meat. There's a, a little bit of a, a coating, a seasoned coating that I like to put in mustard. Sprinkle it over the top. Half a teaspoon of salt, some pepper. OK, so I'm going to sear this meat in a teaspoon of groundnut oil. Groundnut oil is the lowest calorie cooking oil. Sear the meat so the juices try and stay within the joint. I mean, you're talking seconds. You just want that to, that colour. You see the brown colour that you're getting on top of it? OK, really good tip. Before I put the meat in the actual uh, baking tray, I'm going to lay down some chopped sweet potato and acts as a trivet. Rest the meat on top of the sweet potato, and then the meat is not cooking in its own fat. It's a good tip. 
choose a cut of beef with as little fat as possible and add flavour with seasoning, not fatty calories. If you can, ask your butcher to trim it before you take it home. Let's get this in the oven. It's going to take about half an hour. Is that all? About half an hour, then we'll rest it for about ten minutes. OK, wow. OK, on to our veg. We're going to boil the sweet potato and butternut squash. Yeah. It won't take very long. It's, it's small chunks, so it's only probably going to take eight, ten minutes. In the meantime, we'll get on to the gravy. Dawson's special juice, Lizzie. Yay. Yes, Lizzie's happy. Gail's Very happy. happy. Everyone's happy. Right, good. We've got mushrooms, we've got some chopped garlic, uh, chopped onion. Mm. All put done. And it's going to be in the pan with just a touch of the stock. A little bit of thyme in there as well. That's going to reduce down to a nice, strong, pungent flavour. Oh! In a regular roast, the gravy alone is a hefty 106 calories. By packing his gravy with tons of flavour to compensate for cutting out the meat juices and using corn flour rather than gravy granules to thicken, Matt's steaming stuff tickles the taste buds at just 34 calories. Now, Lizzie, this is probably quite new to you, making gravy this way. How do you do yours? With loads of granules. Which are full of salt, full mm. of preservatives. Yeah. Have you checked the tin for the no, calories? I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Ignorance is bliss. <laughs> like There's something wrong salt. about you, <laughs> honestly. You want me to mash? You fancy that? Come on then. Get, get, the, go on, get the muscles get out. Get them mashing oh, arms. <laughs> you watch that. Look at the power in that right arm. <laughs> <laughs> Gravy goes into. A sieve. See, it all comes through, all the good stuff coming through there. You see that? That's lovely. Yeah? I'm just going to try this mash mat just for taste. <laughs> that was one heck of a mouthful for taste. <laughs> <laughs> right, come on. Budge up, budge up, budge up, budge up. God, is that a domestic goddess, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> Served up with the mash and steamed broccoli, Matt's flavour-filled roast beef dinner comes in at 464 calories, nearly 500 less than a regular roast would be. Sunday is Slim Day. Mm. You gonna have a go? Yeah. 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 Lizzie, yeah. gravy. Yeah, thank you. Thank <laughs> you for showing me the light. <laughs> <laughs> If you want to try any of Matt's recipes, head to channel4.com slash food. With the final weigh-in just three days away, me and the girls are back for one last shot before we hit the scales. Alcohol's been banned, so we're all trying to be extra good. Oh, I know what I'm going to try. I'm going to try pomegranate. Josie, what have you been having eggs with? What can I do with an egg? Make it into an omelette. All right, what was some peppers or something? Yeah. We just need to keep focused on our new healthy mindset when it comes to shopping for supplies. Load up with the veggies, girls, because we want to be getting into those dresses. Yeah. OK, so it's one final hurdle and we're there. Can you pass me some carrots, please? Not some carrots. Yes, please. In a few days, we face the scales for the last time with everything crossed to drop a dress size and slip into our glam gowns. This is the final fling on the 1,200 calorie limit. We'll find out how we all get on later in the show. Still to come on my Big Fat Diet Show. More help's on the way for Father Bill, but will the shock of what Cola's doing to his health finally motivate him to kick his habit? If you look at your daily intake of around two litres of fizzy drinks, it could potentially add up to around an extra six stone weight gain a year. I meet the whistleblower who believes some junk food is engineered to make us fat and get us hooked. The food industry has designed foods to literally hijack our brain and keep on getting us to come back for more. And Josie's worried she'll have a wardrobe malfunction. Can you imagine if that dress doesn't fit me tomorrow? I am, I am so worried. I know I'm not going to sleep tonight. I am so worried about that, you know. 